Yes, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm Kevin Burns, Director of Communications for St. Paul Public Schools. I'm joined by Chair Marty Zhang and the members of the St. Paul Board of Education, along with Superintendent Dr. Joe Gothard. Chair Zhang will have a statement, followed by a statement from our superintendent, at which time we will open up the floor for questions. Members of the media will ask you to identify yourselves and the organization uh, that you're representing. With that, Chair Zhang. Thank you, Director Burns. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you all for being here. My name is Marty Zhang, and I'm the chair of the St. Paul uh, School Board of Education. I am joined today by Superintendent Gothard and my colleagues on the board behind me. We are community members, parents, educators, organizers. We all have great love for our students, this district, and for our community. And we are here for all the same reasons, to make sure our mission come alive each and every day. That mission is to inspire students to think critically, pursue their dreams, and to change the world. These past couple of days have been painful and exhausting for our community. And through this process, we heard from thousands of people advocating for our students, their needs, and for change in this district. As a board, we are and have been engaged with administration throughout this process since May, when, it, when negotiation began. We have been present at the marathon mediation session since Saturday, where most of the sessions went late into the early morning. As elected board members, elected by our community in St. Paul, we are mindful of our responsibility to our students our community and the taxpayers of the city. We are united in our support for the solutions that help both students and educators thrive. This is why we charge our superintendent, Dr. Gothard, to develop a strategic plan, SPPS Achieves. The creation of SPPS Achieves was created collectively over many months with many diverse stakeholders across the city. As always, we value all, all of the perspective and input to improve the education of our students alongside our long-term strategic plan, SPPS Achieves. In February of last year, the Board of Education worked with Superintendent Gothard to approve our guiding values and parameters on negotiations for all of our bargaining units. The agreed parameters have continued to be wage increases of 1.5% for the first year and 2% in the second year over the course of a new two-year contract with the intention that we have responsibility to treat all of our bargaining units fairly. In addition, as a public body working with public funds, we believe that all parties should come together to work within our parameters so that we don't make financial decisions outside of the public view. The challenge is that if we agree to allocate more resources to satisfy one bargaining unit, it would impact our resources to provide a fair contract with the other bargaining units. It would also mean that we will need to make cuts to our programs and needs for our schools. Let me repeat that. The reality is that there isn't a secret pot of money any, somewhere here in, the, in this school district. The voters of St. Paul elected us to provide strategic direction to our superintendent and to provide fiscal oversight and, account and accountability that reflects the community's values and priorities for our school district. The board allocates the district's resources with the focus on our students' needs so that they can su be successful in our schools. It is critical that we have resources to do the job that we need to do. We witness passion and care for our students by everyone around the negotiating table. And that is the hope and foundation with which we will go forward. We all agree that our students need additional support, but we must be intentional and responsible when increasing investments in our district. There are great things happening in our school district, St. Paul Public Schools. However, this educational system does not optimize the urban educational experience for our students today. We have to be real with that and we have to speak our truth about that. 
We are committed to improving the system and supporting our students and families and our talented value staff. But this takes all of us together and it is all of our responsibility to ensure that this change happens through policies, through operations, and through mindsets. And it takes all of us together as a whole community. Students, staff, community members, families, all alike. It is all of our responsibility. Thank you very much, Chair Jean. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joe Gothard, Superintendent of St. Paul Public Schools. I'd like to thank our board directors for their unwavering support through these last nine months. Um, it has been a long, long nine months. And when we set guiding values to negotiate our contracts, we had a lot of discussions about what that meant to each of us as individuals. And we put together as a team, as a governing board, and their employee, the administrator of St. Paul Public Schools, a set of guiding values that continue to guide us. Over the last nine months, members of SPFE and SPPS administration have been engaged in negotiating this new two-year contract. Our educators introduced passionate, personal, and relevant proposals to the needs they experience in their work and in supporting students. The sum of our efforts produced a decisive action and brought SPPS to a near standstill for three days. To our educators, I am glad we reached settlement, and I eagerly await your return to your schools and work sites. And I thank you for your commitment to our students. To our students, I'm sorry that you endured this period of uncertainty. Several of you communicated with me directly, and your words really mean a lot. I can clearly see how much you value your educators, your schools, your communities, you have dreams, you want to be in school, you want to learn. That's why we're here. To our families, I'm sorry. You rely on me to lead this district and provide the supports necessary to provide an excellent education to your children. I know the days you waited for us to finalize this contract have been challenging. And to the St. Paul community, thank you for having our back. Hearing from many of you, it is clear you care deeply about St. Paul Public Schools, our students, and our staff. My team, many of whom are here today, um, have put countless hours in to working together to how we could successfully negotiate this contract. Many of them were with us through the wee hours of this morning to get this final contract settled and signed to bring us here today. My commitment moving forward is first and foremost to honor our contract settlement and to move forward in implementing SPPS Achieves, our strategic plan to increase long-term student outcomes for the most amazing resource in St. Paul, our students. Thank you. We were able to maintain our board directed parameters of 1.5% in the 1920 current year and 2% in the 2021 year. And in future years, does this, does this agreement commit you to additional spending in the future beyond that? The settlement that we agreed is for the 1920 year and the 2021 year, a two year contract. The, clearly, there was a, a breakdown in negotiations at a time um, on Tuesday morning. And during that time, in order to have our schools reopen, we all had to evaluate our positions, our values, and see how we could come together uh, to come to settlement. The details of some of the uh, contract will be out once it is ratified by St. Paul Federation of Educators. expressed um, there, there was sort of coronavirus hanging over these negotiations. It's obviously un unprecedented times. Can you speak about how this virus and the uncertainty, uh, just with schooling even going forward in the state in the coming weeks, how that uh, influenced uh, mediation negotiations in that room? 
Sure. What I'd like to say is that I've been engaged at negotiations every single meeting since May with the exception of one meeting back in September. I am committed to making sure negotiations takes place in good faith to make sure that my team has my support, has my direction through the Board of Education, and I will not allow a distraction like COVID-19, something that is a pandemic across this world, to tarnish what we accomplished in negotiations. Good faith negotiating with the parameters set by the Board of Education. I was in contact with our emergency command post here at the district, making sure that they had all the support they need to make decisions regarding COVID-19. It did not interfere with our negotiations at all. Our team here at the district had the information, the support, and the personnel they needed, and they had my ear if need be. But I have great trust and faith in the professionals here that were able to handle and will continue to handle anything related to COVID-19. I just have to follow up on that, um, being that everyone is talking about that and the new um, recommendations from the health department. Have you guys been discussing that? Did you have any time to do that after those recommendations just came out yesterday? I know there's a call with superintendents today. What's the plan here in St. Paul? We have a, uh, thank you, Jessica. We have a, a team here at the district that has been engaged in this, you know, for the, for the last week. Mm -hmm. um, and in doing so, it allows me to, to focus on the task at hand, which was negotiations. So I've had reg regular updates from them. Uh, I've updated our Board of Education. Uh, we are working with the Minnesota Department of Health, uh, you know, through the governor and have, a, a, have an incredibly equipped team here at the district to help us, um, you know, disseminate that information and make decisions as they happen. Um, as you all know, um, this is happening in a way that is spread throughout the United States and impacting communities, school districts, large urban centers differently, you know, from coast to coast. So we are monitoring it very closely, uh, working with our other districts as well. It's very important to us um, that we're, you know, working together, sharing resources, sharing information. Uh, but we await, I believe there's a press conference later today, um, you know, we await information uh, just like many of you. So there was a lot of talk during the, uh, the, 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 the week, well, they've been out on strike and certainly in the weeks before that too, uh, about mental health supports uh, in the school buildings. Can you speak at all? And again, I haven't made up with any of us specifics on, on, on what is now, you know, going to be added, what we can see uh, in the buildings uh, going forward. Let me just be clear about the fact that we all agree uh, that our current education system right now, um, not only uh, to St. Paul, but um, in, our, the, in our region, in our state, we're not ready for the urban student today. We are not. So we agree with our educators. Um, we, both teams, our district team and our educators are passionate about our kids. We came together to bargain in good faith uh, to ensure that, you know, we meet the needs of our students. And that change will not happen uh, in the next three days. It will not happen in the next year to uh, fully, adequately uh, meet the needs of our students. But we all are working hard to ensure that that happens. Um, Superintendent, do you want to speak about the, the numbers? So we, we do have the ability to, to look at our district as a whole. We do have an idea of what our district looks like as a whole picture and where we can add staff. But that staff, those staff are going to be added based on need. Uh, we are not in a resource position to staff every school the same way at every level. It, it just isn't going to happen. And I could sit here and talk about resources. I'm not going to. I'm going to talk about who we have, how we can best use them, and how we can best support them. We can make a great impact. We can make an incredible impact. We have incredible staff here at the district. We have community partners who have opened their arms and said, we're ready. And we can make sure that our students have the support that they need. We can make sure that the questions they have about what life is like in a pre-K-12 uh, community where there's a lot going on, we can make sure that we can be the place they can come to. We can be the people who can back them up. We can be the people who can lift them up. And I'm really uh, looking forward to a, a future where we can focus on improving our already fantastic, fantastic system. Sure. I'm, I'm going to separate the two. Uh, COVID-19 is over here. We settled the contract to end a strike. Okay? We, we settled the contract to end a strike. We no longer have a strike. We're in session on Monday. We have staff back today. 
we are dealing with COVID-19 just like we would on a school day. I just want to also clarify too that that I've been there um, and my colleagues and I, we've been at the marathon uh, sessions um, since Saturday with our team. Um, and you know, I've seen both teams, our union, our teachers, our educators, and our administration team, you know, work through the night with dedication to ensure that you know, we center around students. So I, I, you know, I want to make sure that that message is, is uh, not forgotten or you know, overshadowed by uh, the virus. Because both teams, again, showed up for kids. Both teams showed up. And our discussions were centered around the needs for our kids. At, at this point, I'm not going to discuss the details of proposals that were exchanged and agreed to through this negotiation sessions. What I will say is that collaboration with the St. Paul Federation of Educators is a value they hold is very important. And some of the challenges and the time it takes is that, you know, we have some competing values and, and competing ways, I should say, uh, that we act on our, on our values. Uh, so it took some conversation and it took some some understanding from one another before we could align uh, what that looks like in a, in a tentative agreement on a proposal around collaborative funding for schools. And just one final thing then on this, just as someone who's covered it just recently, I'm not on the education beat typically, but the, it sounds like the union sees something, you know, stuff going on in their buildings and they want control over, you know, mental health teams and then they want resources and hires and you've got sort of, sounds like you want to obviously continue to control the full budget. How, how, do you, how do we go forward here in terms of healing wounds or whatever between you know, what wants are on the front lines and what, how you think is best this money gets spent for the taxpayer? I, I just want to be clear. This is not about winners or losers here. This is not about power and control. This is about, again, how we, our education system here in the state, we lack the... Uh, we are not able to meet the needs of our urban students today. That is very clear, and I just want to ensure that, you know, that again, our teachers, you know, they are the, the uh, dedicated uh, people who are in our buildings. Our principals are in our buildings. Our nutrition services are in our buildings. Our bus drivers are driving our kids, ensuring that they, could just, they get to school. They are the ones, you know, uh, who sees our students on a day-to-day -day basis. This is, this, this is about the needs for students. It's not about control, it's not about winners or losers. No one, no one wins in a strike. Our whole community, we hurt. All of us hurt as a whole in a strike. It seems every uh, contract negotiation has spiked drugs lately, and in this case, we're finally actually had a spike. Superintendent, two years from now, is there any reason to believe that it won't be as contentious as it has been? I think we have incredible work to do, just like I said two years ago, and that doesn't stop. Um, we are collaborative partners in all that we do in making sure that we can focus on our students and come to some agreement with how we're going to do that work and, again, increase long-term student outcomes for the children of St. Paul Public Schools. I also want to add that, um, that the responsibility of our, our whole system, our, the change that we need for our students, it takes all of us together. It takes all of us together. And the board, my colleagues and I are committed to ensure that we, uh, we re-look, we rethink with our educators. What does it mean to be in a partnership? What does it mean to work together? That is our commitment. That 3.30 hour, what was, what was the emotion in the room there from at least you guys? We, um, we put a lot of hard work in. Um, I'm proud of our chair. Um, I saw a leader born through this process. Um, not that Chair Zhang wasn't a leader before, but it was uh, amazing to watch her guide her colleagues and provide us the support we needed 
uh, to come to agreement. And I could say that for our entire team. Uh, you know, Chair mentioned they've been there since Saturday. We were there since Wednesday with uh, just a, a short day off. Um, it is definitely a activity of endurance and one that you have to find and stay centered on who you are, on the task at hand, and make sure most importantly that you don't forget that you have to do it together. Uh, there is no time for individuals when it comes time for the work that we accomplish. That is a team, a team effort. Uh, and, and I think that's what, there have been many early morning walkaways from our negotiations and I'm always left with that, that I come back because of that team and because of the job we have to do on behalf of our students in St. Paul Public Schools.